from your reading, you read about forces and system schemas and force diagrams or free body diagrams. Um, first of all, let's start off with system schemas. Um, so here I was, I was pushing the hover puck in the very beginning. So let's do a system schema of this situation right here, okay? So first of all, from the video you looked at, I'm hoping that you saw there was a little bit of space in between the hover puck and the floor, which means there's no actual physical contact between, between the two. So for a system schema, we talk about all the things that are involved here. So for instance, there's the hover puck. Uh, there's me. Um, I'll put the floor down. And we always have to include the earth as well. So earth. It's actually the entire earth, so it's not just, you know, the, the ground and the magma and the mantle. It's also the atmosphere, the entire earth, everything on it, and included in the system, so earth. Um, the hover puck and the teacher are interacting with one another, and so we have to draw a double-headed arrow. And that represents a force interaction. Uh, in this case, I'm pushing the hover puck, but by the same token, you can't be touched without it touching you. Um, I'm touching the hover puck, but the hover puck's also touching me, so there's a push between the two of us. Um, let's see, what else? Um, there is a force between the floor and the hover puck, but it's not actual touching going on here. So it's not, from your reading, it's not a normal force. There's no friction here because there's no actual rubbing. And so it's just one force, and that force happens to be a thrust from the fan that's, the fan is pushing air, and then the air pushes back on the fan, but then the air hits the floor and pushes the floor downward, and it pushes the air upward. So I'm just gonna call this thrust. Thrust. Um, let's see, the floor and the teacher are actually touching, right? Because I'm being supported. So there's a normal force between me and floor. Um, I sometimes call it a support force, it's supporting me. Um, but a lot of times we call it a normal force because it's perpendicular to the floor. Um, to the surface, so I'm going to call it normal. Students really get confused by this force because they think normal, abnormal, uh, something other than normal. The word normal is a mathematical word that means perpendicular, and it's perpendicular to the surface. So you might want to put a little note to yourself, this word normal means 90 degrees to the surface means perpendicular to the surface. Another name for the normal might be a better name would be a support force, so you don't confuse it with abnormal or something like that. Um, there's also a friction force between me and the floor that keeps me from moving. So remember how I said I push the hover puck and the puck pushes me back? You'll notice that I don't start moving backwards. That's because there's a frictional force that's keeping me from moving. So there's actually, two forces between me and the floor, there's this friction force too. Okay, then the earth interacts with everything that's up here. So it interacts with the teacher through gravity. And you need to understand that that double-headed arrow means there's a gravity force on me, yes, from the earth, but there's also gravity force on the Earth from me. There's a gravitational force between the floor and the Earth, and because the floor has a certain amount of mass, there is a gravitational force on the Earth from the floor. And then finally, there is a gravitational force on the hover puck 
and there is a gravitational force on the Earth from the hover puck. So this is the SISMA schema, and what it really does is it helps you identify all the things that are interacting. So for instance, the push and the thrust and the friction and the normal force, those are all forces that come about because there's a touching going on. This gravitational force, I forgot to label this one over here, this gravi gravitational force, these are all um, field forces, so there's no actual physical touching. So there is a gravitational field force on this eraser, and I can see it because if I let go of it and no longer provide a support force, and notice it's the support force for my fingers are perpendicular to the surface and we're like this, but if I never no longer provide it, it'll fall. So there's this field, what's coming out and grabbing it is this gravitational field that's pulling it down. Okay, so after we identify all the forces, then you have to identify which object of these that you're most interested in studying to then go on and draw the force diagram or the free body diagram. And more than likely, it's probably the hover puck. That's the one that's interesting. And so I'm gonna draw a dotted line around it. What this does is it helps me identify all the forces that act on the hover puck. Okay, well, there's a thrust force on it. There's this push force on it. And there's this gravitational force on it. So right here in the beginning, if I asked you to draw a motion map for the hover puck, right in the beginning when I was pushing it, you would have said, well, it's speeding up in this um, very short amount of time where I'm touching it and I'm pushing it. In other words, um, the motion map would show the dots getting further and further apart. And so there's this acceleration on the thing. That's only during the brief time that I'm actually touching it, I'm pushing it, okay? That's because we have three forces and these forces aren't balanced. There's a gravitational force on the puck that's straight downward. And so maybe I'll go ahead and draw that force diagram right here below it for the hover puck. So there is a gravitational force, force of gravity, on the hover puck, so I'll say H. Notice this is a subscript, so it's a little bit lower on the hover puck from, well, what's causing it? It's caused by the Earth. So that's the force of gravity on the hover puck from the Earth. Sometimes to be lazy, I won't call that the force of gravity. I'll just simply call that the weight force. So this is one correct way of putting it. And yes, you do need to put the subscripts. The FG tells me it's gravity force. H tells me it's on the hover puck. And the E tells me it's from the Earth. Or if you're like, I don't want to do it that way, you can also do it this way. The force of gravity is also known as the weight. So the weight force, again, on the hover puck. And again, it's from the Earth. So you have your choice. Please understand that the force of gravity is the same as the weight. It's the same thing, same name, uh, same idea. Okay, so we have the uh, force of gravity, took care of that one. Um, let's go ahead and do the push force. Well, the push force would be from me onto the hover puck. And so I'm kind of pushing it this direction. So I'm gonna draw that force in. And so I'm gonna call that the force and I, I don't know, this is a force of push. So it's a push force on the hover puck from the teacher. And again, don't forget your, um, your vector notation. Okay, the last one I have to draw is this thrust force. And that thrust force is the force that's keeping it from touching the table or the floor in this case, and so that's upward. Now, notice it doesn't actually start to fly upward. So that means that it must be exactly balanced by this gravitational force. So I'm going to measure this. 
and put this up here like that. All right, so that's a thrust force. So I'm going to say force of thrust on the hover puck from, well, you have to think about what's thrusting it upward. What, what thing is thrusting it upward? And actually, you know what? I probably should have had, this isn't exactly right. This is not exactly right. I should have had air over here, air. It's still thrust force. So the put, a hover puck is thrusting the air down, the air thrusts it up. And then the air um, pushes on the floor and the floor pushes back on the air and that would be thrust. And then I actually need to have a gravitational force coming over here acting on the air from the earth, so gravity. That's better. Okay, so it's a force of thrust on the hub truck, actually from the air. Uh, the truth is we won't spend a whole lot of time on the system schemas. I just want to introduce those to you so it helps you identify if you're like, I don't quite understand figuring out what forces would act on the hover puck. I just cannot see that. If I can't see that it's gravitational force, there's a thrust force and a push force from the person, then I really recommend drawing a system schema to help you identify all the things that are interacting. We really won't spend a whole lot of time on that. You're not testing over that, maybe quiz, I can't remember. Okay, so that's in the beginning. Um, in here in the middle, I'm hoping that when you're watching the hover puck, you notice that it was going at a constant speed. I should say a constant velocity. It wasn't speeding up, it wasn't slowing down. And I'm hoping that that makes a lot of sense to you because it's not actually physically touching the floor. So there's no way that it could slow down. There's no friction acting on it because it's not touching the floor. Sometimes students think about air resistance. Uh, it's not going fast enough for air resistance. It's moving very slowly, so no air resistance either. So it's moving at a nice constant velocity, and if you don't believe me, then go back. That's why I put the meter stick here, so if you wanna do video analysis of it, um, go check it out. You'll notice that it is moving at constant velocity. So I want you to realize then that means that the forces must be balanced because over here when the forces were unbalanced, those two cancel, they're balanced. But this one's unbalanced. Notice we have an acceleration. So when we have unbalanced forces, that causes an acceleration. But here, we don't have an acceleration, we have a constant velocity. So that must mean that the forces are balanced. And so I could go ahead and draw another system schema and let's see if I can go ahead and do that up here. Um, this would be the hover puck. And this time I won't forget air, air. There's the floor. There's the earth. But this time I'm not gonna include the teacher, me, because I'm not, touching it anymore. So whenever you're thinking about your system schema and force diagram that comes later, you have to think about all the things that are interacting. That means touches, or it could be field forces. So for instance, the gravity force is a field force, but I don't exert a field force on this. Um, so let's see, the air um, causes a thrust on the hover puck, and the hover puck causes a thrust on the air. So that's thrust. Um, again, there's this thrust force between the air and the floor. And let's see, that's kind of it other than now all the field forces. So these are the only touches going on. 
The field forces would be, let's see, we'd have a gravity force between the Earth and the hover puck. Gravity. Between the air and the Earth, a gravity force. And between the Earth and the four, a gravity force. And I only want to consider the force diagram for the hover puck. So let me go ahead and draw a dashed line through here. Again, we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on system schema. I'm kind of hoping that you'll go, oh yeah, I can figure out what force is acting on it. There's only two forces acting on it. There's a thrust force and there's this gravity force. The gravity force is always straight down toward the center of the earth on the hover puck. So it would look like this. And it, it didn't get any heavier, so it's gonna be the same amount as over here. Instead of going to force of gravity, I think I'm gonna say weight this time. The weight on the hover puck from the Earth. And since it's not accelerating, it must balance out the thrust force. And there it is. One thing I want you to notice is that a force diagram doesn't tell you about the motion other than it tells you acceleration. Like this one over here, I can tell it's accelerating, okay? This tells me it's not accelerating, but I don't know if it's moving or not. Um, all I know for sure is that the forces balance out. In this case, it was moving. It was moving at a nice constant velocity. So whenever you see totally balanced forces like this, completely balanced out, so they cancel, there's no net force, it could either be stationary, not moving, or it could be moving with the constant velocity. Okay, then finally, from the video, you notice that the hover puck kind of hit the box and kind of bounced off of it which means there was a change in velocity. There was a change in motion. And so at first it was coming in like this, and maybe I'll go ahead and do some, um, I don't wanna draw the hover puck, but I'll just draw this, uh, this um, kind of motion map here. So it's kind of coming in like this, but then all of a sudden it slowed down very quickly, slowed down, right? So the the velocities of vectors are like this. Then all of a sudden, it slows down much shorter. So that tells you there must be an acceleration at this point in the opposite direction. And then it started speeding up this way. So I'm going to have one big Uber dot here. And then once it was no longer contacting, the box, then it was nice constant velocity again. So I'm gonna draw the force diagram right when it hits the box, okay? So I'm gonna see if we can go ahead and not draw the system schema because like I said, I just wanted to introduce it to you so that if there's some students having a hard time identifying what forces, then uh, you have something that you can fall back on. So the forces on the hover puck here, let's see, well, there would be a, still a weight force straight down, gravity force. Didn't get any heavier, so it'd still be the same. Force of gravity on the hover puck from the Earth. Notice I changed, I went from weight to force of gravity. That's because they're the same thing. Kind of like Robert and Bob, they're the same, right? Nickname. And uh, there would still be this thrust force upward that exactly balances it because the hover puck does not change motion vertically. So force of thrust on the hover puck from the air. But it is changing motion horizontally. And I'm hoping that you can see that there is an acceleration this way, which means there must be an unbalanced force this direction. And so I'm gonna go ahead and all that force in. So I'm going to jump over here real quick. Notice that in this case, the force diagram, we do have an acceleration that was speeding up. 
if you're looking at this force diagram, I haven't labeled this, I will in a second, but this is still having an acceleration. This, this time the acceleration is that way, but in the beginning it wasn't speeding up, it was just simply slowing down. Again, this does not tell you which direction it's moving. It only tells you the direction of the acceleration, whatever direction that unbalanced force is. All right, so this would be the force of, I don't know, uh, let's call this an, a push force again for the box. So a push force on the hover puck from the box. So what I want you to get to summarize, what I want you to get from this is that whenever you have balanced forces, then either it's not moving or we're moving with constant velocity. And when it's unbalanced forces, then you're gonna have acceleration. That means it could be speeding up, it could be slowing down, or one more that it could be is that it changed direction here. If you remember the, the hover puck came in and bounced away, it changed direction. So there's three ways you can have an acceleration. You can have a um, speeding up, you could have a slowing down, or you can have a change in direction.